Hi, welcome back to my blog, Eddie's English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today we are going to read Wilfred Wayne's one of the beautiful war poem, Strange Meeting. As Wilfred Wayne is a Georgian poet and particularly a romantic as well as a war poet. His attitude to life is pity of war, or the war it distilled in life, and how is how war is inflicting pain and suffering in human being. In Wilfred Wayne, there is a romantic way of living or a romantic way of looking at the life with full rejuvenation, with full mirth, and with full rejoice of understanding a way he wished to see in his life, a way in which uh, the nature is beautifully attracting the life and full of rejuvenation and recreation, but from the core of the poet's heart there is pain and pathos instilled by a world war. So in Wilfred Wayne you will find a plenty of text which is a vivid description of the warfare, vivid description of the pathos and barbaric notions of war and how it inflicts blood, wounds and suffering to humanity. And there is a parallel attraction towards nature as if war is against natural norms. Whereas nature appeals to romantic accumulation, romantic rejuvenation and a full of life. But in war, there is everything. The barbaric and cruelty is not all, not at all the passions that humanity or rather that the nature permits. In Strange Meeting, the very title it entitles that it is a strange meeting of somebody or someone's. Uh, it is strange in that sense uh, a soldier is meeting another soldier, but uh, the enemy soldier in fact, but the meeting is in the dream or in the vision of hell or in actuality of the hell. So in that vision, in that meeting, uh, each one is no more the enemy there as they killed each other in the war front, but after the death, after their reunion at the hell, and they can share the agony of the war, like that of Dante's Inferno, where Guido de Montefeltro is confined to the chasm of hell in the dungeons of hell and sharing the sufferings to Dante all to tell it that it cannot be shared to the other world um, because nobody alive can enter into the hell. The same prospect or the same notion has been delivered uh, like that of um, the poet soldier who is uh, revealing the truth of the war to the world as the voice of the hell cannot reach into the beauty of the earth but in reality we hear it and the agonized cry of the two soldiers who fought each other and died is like that of a snap towards the so-called civilization which is investing or propagating as well as making it a proportionate degree of math in the name of world war. So let's see the poem. I'm reading it, Stranger by Stranger, and this is about its meaning, line by line. You should try to understand and comprehend, and uh, underline the key words that I, I will highlight while reading, and get the meaning to its parallel concept of life, which we can see even now. Uh, it is true that it had been true to the um, 
what video and the relevance of the poem is lost that's not the case even today we can have the references of its meaning in our present day to day society so let's proceed paradoxically enough when vegan writing poetry in the tradition of the romantics with kids and selly as his models equipped with the romantic sensibility when might have written better poetry but circumstances ordained otherwise the war provided when with subject matter which turned the romantic elegiac strain of his early poems into the deep feelings of sorrow and compassion which characterizes his later poems the idea of the futility of the soldier sacrifice is the theme of strange meeting in fact in all of the wilfred owen's poem it centers around the same theme in fact it is a poem of visionary dream the poet soldier imagines that he has escaped from battle and gone to the other regions as he keeps watching the corpses once brings up with page was recognition in fixed eyes the other man in its cadaverous look who is in fact the enemy soldier relates the horrors and frustrations accompanying war he said that he has been snatched away by death even before he could pass on to humanity the knowledge he acquired the truth untold the bitter experience of the battlefield the pity war he further voices against the abstract and honor the glorification of war an enemy in life becomes a friend and that friendly companion becomes in the land of dead finally when everything is disclosed the identity is revealed he bids friend to join strange meeting is the most emphatic of one's imaginative statement of war experiences striking in its crispness and brevity it is the best poem that he own a, a kind of a passport to immortality war is a organized brutality and that organized brutality has made everything destroyed everything dejected and such kind of retreat even though it is a material progress even it is in the name of civilization we make war but war is itself a retreat or a backward journey so the horror of war is the entirety of the poem strange meeting so let's begin the poem the strange meeting itself transcends the art and moves into the other world we are set in a hellish scene in that hell the two soldiers belonging to different groups belonging to different enemy countries meet each other in the battlefield one might have killed the other and the english soldier meets the german soldier in that unconscious sleeper cells and they are in mutual recognition the english soldiers ask the german soldier the reality of war so the poem begins in that dramatic situation it seemed that out of battle i escaped down some profound dull tunnel long since scooped through granites which titanic wars had grind yet also they are in combat slippers grown to fast in thought or dead to be bestirred then as i proved them one sprang up and stared with piteous recognition in fixed eyes lifting distressful hands as if to bless so the scene is hell the scene is battlefield the battlefield is compared to be a hell is one the actuality of the scene might be a baffling one it might be 
a actual war font which is akin to hell or rather ironically the poet states the war field as if a hell the granites the heating of the bombardment has made some scooped holes at this chasm and there the enemy soldiers as well as soldiers from their own are lying unconscious they are in deep stupor they are to be dead and they cannot be stirred into reality they cannot be stirred into alive as it is a hell scene both are dead but the death in earthly world is like awakening in the other world same is here as i proved them one sprang up and stared the poet soldier is staring them calling them if they are dead or awake as he is confident that they are all dead nobody is alive one sprang up and with pedias recognition with some grave recognition it started telling the truth the truth of war the truth they are facing the strange meeting now become a meeting in a dream like state in a trance the living and the dead between the two persons what can be the reality the reality is that the poet might be poet soldier might be that lazarus might be that person who is alive like that of guido who is in actuality living meeting the dead german soldier when's purpose of arrangement of such a meeting is to bring out the pity and horror of modern warfare and how barbaric how hellish they are in actuality the titanic words that it refers are the colossal mythological war fought by the titans and the gods but here it does not mean any kind of mythological references it rather a kind of euphemism in groan it denotes two intersecting vaults in a vaulted roof the war has pulled the soldiers from the mundane world down to the hell and that a realistic situation has been stated here the encumbered sleepers is the unconscious dead soldiers who are there huddled together here the sleep also suggests a symbolic meaning like that of a christian note of resurrection as christ resurrected himself for the love of humanity so these strange friends are in a sleep like state but to state a universal brotherhood and to service to philomen and to serve to god when here make this sleep a awakening state only to bring the reality of the war in front of us so here with a smile the enmity is no more with a smile and even though the smile is dead one they knew each other and they knew they are stood in the hell and it's a kind of a strange meeting and they started relating the horror of war in front of us as in the previous stanza it stated the very smile is the mutual recognition of the two soldiers one might be in death and one might be alive one might be a british one might be a german the dead smile refers to be a pathetic situation of the earth the place is hell the war crime against humanity and those who were killed in that fight and get killed in that war must visit in hell they are not entitled to be in heaven so modern warfare or the experiences those who are having through the dead soldiers or the soldiers who are fighting they are fighting for their country's cause but they lead to the hell 
there is no heaven there is no romantic references regarding this the lines it states with a thousand pains with visions face was screened yet no blood reached there from the upper ground and no guns thumped or down the flues made more so the reality is that in that hell there is no such barbaric thundering of those cells in the modern warfare even modern warfare is more hellish than the hell in actuality as stated in the biblical life strange friend i said here is no cause to mourn none said the other save the undone years the dead soldiers in hell through his exposure to the atrocities of a war learns from his own experiences that war is an utterly inglorious business stepped in pathos the truth untold simply pertains to the pity of war the pity war distilled the british soldier that is the soldier poet readily recognizes him and beats him as strange friend friend the common humanity strange as they fought in the war to each other here is no cause to mourn here is nothing to mourning about here is nothing to sorry tales of fighting here is all friendship and sharing the message to each other none said the other said the andaniers he said that yes in this hell we cannot have that any but we have lost many years is it the year that we should have meeting in hell in dead the undone years the lost years of youth are the greatest loss of humanity the greatest loss they have encountered in their the barbaric war that is by product of this civilization and covid years war mong have killed thousands of people with their dreams unfulfilled the war deprives the world of the contribution these young people might have made to the true progress of civilization moreover their death prevents them from telling the world that war really is and how great a damage it does to the progress of mankind thus the world remains ignorant of the pity and horror of war that pity and horror of war has spoiled their years of youthful juvenile and decorative years of living with romantic dreams the hopelessness is the very by product of this war they have dejected their very own living by the loss of life in the name of war in the name of fighting without knowing each other they might have been imbibed with the spirit of fighting for the nations but in actuality they fought against humanity and spoiled their life as well as the opponent's life whatever hope is yours was my life also i went hunting wild after the wildest beauty in the world there had been a parallel dream of yours and mine's yet we fought each other there had been robust romantic idealism in us the beauty of the world haunted us like that of a wildest ecstasy which lies not calm in eyes or braided hairs but mocks the steady running of the hour our romantic idealism of beauty haunted in our beauty attires into love of our beautiful ladies but mocks the steady running of hours we did not recognize how we we should die. we should bypass that time. we even this recognized the very aspects of flowing of time with the mart of romanticism and if it grips grips richlier than here for by my glee might many men have laughed and of my weeping something had been left which must die now with lot of romantic enthusiasm even their grips were grips even their laughter was laughed the grieves and laughter had been with romantic enthusiasm and it as it were all the part and parcel of lives 
दे हैड दे आर फुल एंटाइटलमेंट ऑफ ग्रीविंग दे हैड द फुल एंटाइटलमेंट ऑफ लाफिंग बट ऑल एंड एवरी थिंग हैज बिन स्पॉयल बाय अनटाइमली डेथ आई मीन द ट्रूथ अनटोल्ड द पीटी ऑफ वार द पीटी वार डिस्ट्रिक्ट द ट्रूथ अनटोल्ड इज द ब्लड रियलिटी ऑफ द वार दैट हियर इज नो रोमांटिक हियर इज नो पैट्रियोटिज्म हियर इज ओनली बट बारबारिक cruelty against humanity pity it creates by the war and only but the pity war it distilled there is nothing it can have out of war it is only but spoiling and putting someone into hell now men will go content with what we spoiled or discontent boil bloody and be spilled they will be swept with the swiftness of the tigress none will break ranks though nation streak from progress from the broad humanity everything is being spoiled everything what we have put in the name of war what we have destroyed in the name of where they those war mongers those politicians those governments those warring people will make their accounts ready how we have destroyed the world they will make arguments they even make some fair speeches they even make like that of a kobe to us person they will pounce upon our credibilities pounce upon our aftermaths of actions they will be as fear see are as that of a tigress as swift are as that of a tigress they will all remain in their ranks they will all remain in their ranks in their positions they will remain generals they will remain politicians nobody will be even dragged down only we have lost lives and by our way of war the progress of the nation has been spoiled the humanity the progress of humanism has spoiled the very mart of living the very mart of civilization the intense resignation this fire and this illusionment is the very mood of the strange meeting and the horror the warfare the hellish background and the super human in humanities perpetrated in war everything makes the atmosphere of gloom and horror and it is being possible to retold that story of gloom through the exchanges between the two dead soldiers and the words father it carried courage was mine and i had mystery wisdom was mine i had mastery i was as courageous and that is beyond physical recognition that is beyond understanding that is the mysterious atmosphere in me how i had been courageous even in my entire body i had the knowledge i had the mastery of implementing it in a well being in a well organized way of making this civilization fruitful but i have missed all to miss the march of this retreating world into the vain citadels that are not wall i have spoiled everything to make this world progressive rather i had made it a retreating world i had made it in the name of war and i have made this world retreating a backward journey i made a possibility in the world affairs the wall the city which is not fortified which is not fortified by humanism which is not fortified by philo feelings which is not fortified by human understanding that is like that of a vain settlers which is not fortified which is not restricted by emotions which is not restricted and protected by understanding i have left this world i have left or wasted my mastery of knowledge i have wasted the mystery of my courage in every aspects in the name of war and i myself become a vain human being in the name of war spoiling our 
future as well as spoiling our presence then much blood had clocked their chariot wheels i will go up and wash them from sweet wells even with truths that lie too deep for taint i would have poured my spirit without stint but not through wounds but on the says of war but there is a humanistic appeal of the soldiers they said that there is too much blood said the chariot wheels of civilization is clogged with blood of human being but i will make humanism i will make love i will make sweetness out of the well and i will wash the wheels to to run this civilization on and that is only possible by telling the truth that is lying deep into my heart that love is the only way war can be fought against hatred not by guns and bullets i would have poured my spirit without stain but not through wounds not on the face of war i will not make any enmity out of my wound i will not make be- i don't like to make any benefit out of the face of war by the very by product of war i will just a message full of love a place full of philo philo country a nation with full of friendship and benevolent atmospheres for it some men have bled where no wounds were the parades of men here refers to the very acknowledgement of the human beings so the very notion so the very philosophy of the i will make an appeal to every human beings knowledge where there will be no bleeding but it will bleed into their mind that how disastrous the war is how spoiling the war is poet soldier is clear that he is or willing to be a harbinger of peace and the message of and from this hell is to make this art a habitable one a heavenly one the pathos still continued in the last few lines it says i am the enemy you killed my friend i knew you in this dark for so you front yesterday through me as you chapped and killed i parried but my hands were loath and cold let us slip now sacrificing life for the sake of others it is a sublime act a glorification of human being but the glorification and the wasting of war bullets is like that of an absurd and inhuman behavior and in the name of war so many lives has been spoiled on the contrary death in war is no way a recommendable one only but love can has its own place in human civilization in a growth of human civilization and it has been proved several times the two soldiers one british and the other german they have fought each other in a bitter trench warfare both of them got killed and now they find themselves in a silent place death has resulted in the its 12 fierce passions getting spent although they had been enemies of each other on the cursed battlefield they are no enemy there is no enemy left in this dungeon of hell and that is the actuality that's why it says i am the enemy you kill my friend so here my friend even calling the enemy my friend is the very appealing one after being mortally wounded the dead soldier unbosoms his pain and plies on the eve of his deathly body and he suffering is chiefly mental and spiritual and he and as he delivers the very account how he has been killed to the one who killed him and as they are in hell they are dead they just tell that i have told or they have told or said the notion that is possibly the final message of them for the peace for the lasting peace of this civilization and that's why they say as the actuality they cannot diminish let us sleep now let sleep be permanent in the account of living let sleep be there on the war not on love 
and humanity. Rather, sleep is here symbolically stated. The second meaning here, sleep is here peace, not with hostility of war. Even from our poorest core of heart, there should be only but love and tranquility. We have just completed reading strange meeting. We have learned how strangely this meeting was and how in the strange meeting strange thing happens. But those strange things are stranger to us. But these strange things are no stranger to others. The soldiers who have suffered, they have seen the scene of the hell. In actually, it is the human being who can make the earth a hell or a heaven. So it is our attitude that makes everything possible. And when our view or the view of life as it is exhibited, it can never be told a pessimistic. Rather, there is an optimistic note that the poem ends with. It says, the barbaric or the brutality of the war must be understood by the human being and there might be a lasting peace in near future. With that hope, we can end this poem and when other poems that we will read can also have these type of references further, it will help a bit in future understanding of our poems. So like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel to stay tuned in other lectures. Bye-bye.